Colgate University Television. Born in December of 1981, CUTV was an idea slightly ahead of its time for Colgate. Hello, everyone. The words TV production and liberal arts institution did not really fit together in the same sentence. Our bulky three-quarter inch analog gear was expensive. Believe me, it was no iMovie. The student newspapers hammered us weekly and the Student Association said our necessary video gear would cost too much money. So in the beginning, CUTV wasn't as much about our programming as about politics. Believe me, it was a battle getting started. And for better or for worse, because it was my idea, I became the face of CUTV. Oof. Fortunately, I had help. I'm Jim McNeil here for CUTV. I'm Jeff Bond. I'm Wendy Wills. And I'm Tim Martindale. This is Mary Jane McNamee. This is Susie Friend. And I'm Diane Singer. This is Mark Schachtenberg. I'm Mark Keating. Hi, this is Natalie Campbell. This is Jeanetta Little. I'm Lisa Hip for CUTV. I'm Dave Sloman. And I'm Liz Comer. This is Ken Land, I was saying. Uh, See you later. It took a year, but eventually we got the funding we needed and a studio space to call our own in the old KED dorm basement. We'd been producing shows on borrowed AV gear, but now we had the chance to show them what we could really do. This game did count. Documenting life at Colgate was always the meat and potatoes on our programming menu. Of course we covered sports, reported on upcoming campus social events. And we just like to pass that on to you because we know you'd be pretty thrilled about it. The decisions of the student senate. The new junior class president is Jeff Gunzenhauser, who was elected with 51% of the votes. Colgate Magazine was our first regular series. Go and try this at home. Um, what do you think the image of the radiorette says? Well, I'd hope it would be just, you know, a bunch of people that are enjoying themselves and hoping that everybody else is enjoying themselves, too. What's that there, that white stuff? This is sauerkraut on my, um, on my Wiener schnitzel, which I didn't want to eat because it's kind of sour. And tonight we have a lot of great stories for you. And eventually came a weekly news show. I'm Teresa Wiper with Casey Sprock. In the hustle and bustle of Colgate affairs, certain minor controversies tend to blend into the woodwork of the Colgate frame. It started innocently enough at 10 a.m. with a rally against the apartheid government of South Africa at the chapel. However, after the rally was over, approximately 250 students marched and occupied the administration building, demanding Colgate University divest itself of stocks it holds in companies financially involved with South Africa. What we are attempting to do right now is to pose certain demands uh, to the administration of this university. We have no business, no moral business, no proper, no good business to support the bad business of apartheid. But it all wasn't serious content. We offered plenty of humor. As we dance to the masochism tango, bum bum. totally sexy because I'm just like so creative and I'm so free and I'm I'm so me. You've just shown up for a blind date who is actually blind and he wants to feel what you look like. How far would you let him go? I'd let him put his hands in my bag. <laughs> But I don't think this is entirely what defined CUTV. It was also the editorial side. We launched investigative news and called it 13 Minutes. I know. But we did tackle some of the big controversial issues on campus at the time. Welcome to 13 Minutes. By far the most stinging sanction was the closing of the Deke House, giving some less than 10 days to find housing. 
I had space for everybody. I still have space on campus. Um, some of those spaces are in rooms that you would label as overcrowded rooms. We felt by closing the house, uh, we would create an immediate calm on a situation that was obviously very tense. Jeff Boone, president of the Student Association, had this to say. They're punishing the whole community rather than punish those members in the community who acted irresponsibly. But was it just the actions of the five Deeks who were arrested? A repeated administration point was that the Delta Kappa Epsilon fraternity had a history of abuses. Our editorial perspective was also present in our original programming. Yes, CUTV started producing fiction. Well, sort of. The Senate Web was CUTV's first movie. So what's on your mind? We want to start a TV station. What was that again? They say to write what you know, so this dramatic venture was a loosely veiled account of CUTV's early days. Kind of a back to the future kind of thing. We feel that Colgate's not the right place for these sort of antics. Ironically, this overly dramatic, politically incorrect, mostly unwatchable personal epic now remains as historical insight to some of the actual issues involved in launching CUTV. The object in question was our next attempt at movie making, and this one was better. Do you have any witnesses? No, we got the tape. That's all that counts. Well, I hope no one loses that tape. It addressed women's issues and journalistic ethics. And yeah, it was about television, too. If you destroy this tape, it won't make any difference. They're just making the female equality problem even more difficult to resolve. So, these were the early years of CUTV. Ambitious, controversial, silly. Hey, let's go! Ah! Periodically clever, at times even funny. Stella! Way too serious but always with the craving to be taken seriously. We wanted attention. We were artists, damn it. Journalists, writers, watch us. Yeah, we were winging it a lot of the time, but we were getting it done. Our programming lineup was diverse and new ideas were flowing. Now it's 1985, and CUTV was four years old and graduating into new studio space. The next generation of CUTV producers was already running the show. I was leaving, but CUTV had arrived. My name is Barrett Lester, and I created CUTV. But this is only the beginning. There's another 25 years to tell, and that's another story.